and we receive it. We receive it now in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Everybody say, more than enough. You know, we were uh, doing a series. We started about, I don't know how many weeks ago now. Uh, really, I was just calling it Seed Time and Harvest because literally I thought I was going to get to Seed Time and Harvest, start talking about sowing seed. And it seemed like the, I just couldn't get there right away. And so as I was, uh, and we're going to talk about Seed Time, but I, I just, today I was like, you know what? It, 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 I feel almost disingenuous saying it's Seed Time and Harvest now, but we're going to say today it's uh, more thank than enough. Uh, you can see my spelling is just as good as my talking, uh, but it means more than enough, all right? I'm about to say more than enough. <laughs> oh, man, we got to change that. It's funny. That is funny. Who, gee, who went on my notes and changed it there? <laughs> Let's open our Bibles to the book of 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, and verse number 6. We're going to talk about the blessing of the Lord, and we're going to get there. Many times when we talk about prosperity, people get nervous. They go, oh, prosperity is evil. You know, the love of money is the root of all evil. But as we went through the scriptures, we realized money is not the evil in and of itself. It's our attitude toward money. A matter of fact, God in the scriptures wants you and I to be blessed. Amen. And the reason he wants you and I to be blessed is so that we, as we're going to see in the scripture, have more than enough for ourselves so that we can bless other people. Amen. Just like right now today, uh, we, it could be a simple thing. It could be just a cord, you know, so the TV could be fine, but it, TV could be gone today. So good ground might be buying a new 60 inch TV for the church. We don't know what's going on. Help me, right? But some people say, well, I would like to do that. How many know God wants to get you beyond the like to do it where you're like, Pastor, we got that. I'll take care. No problem. We're not going to go to another service without no, no, we're taking care. How I many that's, that's how God wants us to be so filled with blessings. Amen. Amen. And, and it's, it's not, it's, it, you see, the devil works so hard to get our thinking uh, warped when it comes to the area of offerings and blessing and prosperity. Matter of fact, in the Old Testament, the very first murder uh, was over an offering. Right? We know that Cain and Abel. And if you go to the New Testament, uh, the very first thing uh, of uh, judgment, actually it was divine judgment, was over an offering when Ananias and Sapphira were taking from the Lord. Yes. Right? They said they're going to give it all to God and they kept back part of it and, you know, and they lied about it. Uh, God takes offerings really serious. Yes. I mean, it's very serious business to the Lord. Matter of fact, Eli, the high priest, he got judged. Why? Because his sons were taking from the Lord's offering. And God even said it like this. He said, those that honor me, I will honor. Amen. And those who don't, God says, I won't. How many know there's a blessing when we honor the Lord? Yes. Look at the scripture here. It says this. He says, but this I say. This is the, the word. He says, he which sowed sparingly, that means little bit, shall what? Reap what? Sparingly. Some people wonder and say, Pastor Michael, why is it I'm getting such a small harvest? Well, uh, it's because you're planting a small seed. It's right there in the scripture. He which sows what? Bountifully. Everybody say bountifully. bountifully. Shall what? Reap. Everybody say reap. 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 Bountifully. Bountiful. Now, do we believe the scripture, right? We believe that to be true. Well, if we do, we're going to be sowers because we know if we're going to be sowers, we're going to be reapers, right? Yes. Look at verse number seven. It says this. He said, every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give. In other words, God's going to work on your heart. Giving is not a mental thing or an emotional thing. It's a heart thing. It springs inside your spirit. He said, let, it, let, him, let him so give, not grudgingly or of necessity. How many know God doesn't need your money? But for God loves what kind of a giver? A cheerful giver. Everybody say cheerful giver. Now, look, look what happens in the next verse, and it's for the giver. Verse number eight, and God. In other words, that is a tie-in to the scriptures we just read. And God is able to make all grace abound toward who? The person who sows. Are you hearing me? The, the person who's a giver. Right? The person who's sowing, he's, he, don't, don't just isolate this scripture. He said, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things. Everybody say all things. All Everybody things. say all things. All Everybody things. say all things. All he things. says, in all things, that you may be able to abound to every good work. Yes. That means you have all sufficiency. Look at the word, slide number 13. This is what it is, because this is the blessing of the Lord. 
Some people are saying, Pastor, if I just have enough just to get by, I will be happy. You are opening the door for delusion in your mind. That's not God's best for you. God wants you to have more than enough so that you can be, as we're going to see in the scriptures, blessed with the blessing of Abraham. He said, I will bless you so that you can be a blessing. Yes. It is more blessed to give than to receive. You know, and many times when we have church service, we'll sit there and we'll go, you know, people are sitting there going, you know, I got a testimony. I, I, I received something. I got a new car. And we rejoice with those, don't we, brothers and sisters? If somebody gets a new car, a new house, we go, boy, that's wonderful. That's great. They got a new car. They received a new car. But listen, we need to have more church services where somebody stands up and says, you know what? Bless the Lord. The Lord blessed me, and I was able to give a million dollars to the kingdom. Glory to God. Yes. We'd be all like, huh? <laughs> that's prideful. <laughs> It's more blessed to give. To, we should have some more give, uh, 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 giving testimonies. Uh, we were so blessed, you know. We, we had three houses and we just felt like, my goodness, we just gave one of our houses away. People go, listen, if you want the blessing of the Lord to be exploding and expanding in your life, you got to renew your thinking. Right. right? We would be we would look down on somebody if they said, Well, you know, bless the Lord. I was able to, you know, bless the Lord. Sister, stand up and give a testimony. I just want to thank the Lord. Uh, last week pastor got up and said we needed a new television. And by the goodness and the grace and the sufficiency of God, that new TV, I was able to sow that for the church. Glory to God. Everybody goes, prideful, shameful. No, we should be going, woohoo! Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Notice what it says. I want you to see it here. This is a couple different translations. How many love the word? Look at uh, slide number 14. Everybody say the blessing. the blessing. But notice there, notice there. This is what I want you to see because we're talking about the blessing. He said, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. And this is really tiny, but I want you to see it. It says, God, common English Bible, God has the power to provide you with more than enough. Yes. See, when we're talking about the blessing and the multiplication that God pours on your life, it's not you doing it, it's him doing it. Amen. There is a supernatural blessing that's on the believer. He said that you will always have everything you need, always, and everything to provide more than enough for every kind of good work. The complete Jewish Bible says this. Moreover, God has the power. Everybody say, God has the power. God has the power. To provide. God is the provider with you every gracious gift in abundance. Are you seeing this, church family? Yes. So that you'll always, in every way, you will have all you need yourself and be able to provide abundantly for every good cause. Yes. Everybody say, that's me. Yes. See, I'm a, giver. I'm a giver. See, God multiplies the seed that you sow. Yes. There is a supernatural blessing on you. Amen. He didn't say God was going to bless you because you're educated, you got a PhD, and we don't... You know, my kids are educated, and I, I encourage education. But the, I, the blessing's on their life because of the blessing and not education. you got to look beyond the ed Now, education can be a part of God doing that, but don't, don't, don't well, Pastor, I didn't get a, a degree, so uh, I'm too late to go back to school, so I, I forfeit the blessing. No, the blessing's on you. Yes. The Good News translation says this, and God is able to give you more than you need. So that you always have all you need for yourself and more than enough for every good cause. More than you need. More than enough. How many are hearing this today, church family? Put that up in the message Bible, my dear friend. How many love the word? Everybody say, the blessing of the Lord is on me. Say, the blessing of the Lord is on me. Notice what it says in the, the message Bible. God can pour on the blessing. Mm. How many are thankful that the blessing has been poured on us yes. in astonishing ways so that you're ready for anything and everything more than just ready to do what needs to be done? Yes. Everybody say more than enough. Yes. Everybody say more than enough. Yes. Now notice me. Go over to the Old Testament. I just want you to see some great, great truths here. Everybody say the blessings on me. Blessings on me. How, say it in faith. Say the blessing of the Lord, of the Lord. is on me. I am anointed to prosper. Now, some people get upset with that, but don't get upset with the preacher. I'm just preaching the word, right? I'm going with God's script. So if you don't like God's script, go tell, get a rewrite, and he's not going to rewrite it. Look at Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter, verse number 9. Now, this is a great chapter, Deuteronomy, because it starts out in the first couple of verses. He says, you know, God led them through the wilderness. 
And he, he, he allowed them to hunger. He allowed them to thirst. I don't know some kind of God brings you through the wilderness because he wants to show up his miraculous power. Amen. I mean, they were in the wilderness and there was no way naturally that, that they were, uh, there was provision in the wilderness to, to support uh, millions of people. But God did this and they got a miracle every day. And he said, I was teaching you something there in the wilderness. Now, wilderness living is day by day living. When they were in Egypt, they were slaves. They didn't own themselves. Pro progressive prosperity. They got out of Egypt, and all of a sudden they're there, and they're starting to see the miracles. We see it all the time when somebody gets saved, and they don't know too much, and, and you know, they just all of a sudden, like a big chunk will come in. He's like, they're living by the seat of their pants miracles. And listen, don't despise the seat of the pants miracles. How many are glad for the seat of the pants miracles, man? And the 12, the 11.59 and 59 seconds and all of a sudden he shows up big. How many have seen those seat of the, but you know, God doesn't want you living off the seat of your pants miracles. In the wilderness, the manna was there day by day. Every day they had to go out in faith and get the manna. And if they tried to hoard and store it, it rotted. God was teaching them. He says, I taught you what? So that you may learn. Man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We live by the word, glory to God. And so he starts to tell them this. He says, listen, when you get into that promised land, it's going to be good. How many know the promised land that we're living in right now? It is good. <laughs> It's good. And he said, when you get there, you are going to be blessed. Amen. Notice what it says here in verse number eight. It says this. He goes, you're going to go to a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. He said, this is what you're going to experience when you're in the promised land. You're going to be in a place where you're going to live and there's going to be bread without scarceness. Notice what it says here. I want you to see it. Slide number two. How many love the word? Amen. He said, you're going to have bread without the state of extreme poverty. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Those who rely on the, In other words, poverty, it, meant, it also meant those who rely on the benefits of others, indigence. And that's actually what that word means, whatever, you know. But the point was this. He says, you're going to go to a place and you're not going to be a, 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 a impoverished nation anymore. You're going to eat your bread in a state, not in a state of extreme poverty. He says, go back to the scripture. I want you to see it. He says, for thou shalt not lack. Everybody say not lack. Not he lack. says, when you go to this land, you're going to be eating. There's going to be a lot of bread. Right? right? And he says, not only that, thou shalt not lack anything in it. How many like that? Yes. Everybody say anything yes. is anything. Yes. Notice what the word lack is. He says, thou shalt not lack anything. Slide number three. How many love the word today? Amen. How many are believing this together with me? Yes. You know, what happened in the Old Testament was types and shadows for us in the New Testament. They were living in the shadow and the type were living in the reality of this. Amen. Don't let the devil rob you of your blessing. Amen. The word lack, he says, you, you shall not lack anything. You'll, you'll be without, you'll not, you, you won't be without. You won't decrease. Amen. You won't diminish. You'll, you, you won't have needs. You won't fail. You won't want. You won't lessen. It means to be without, to cause to be lacking. He says, when you're there in the promised land, you're going to have everything you need. And not only that, when you're there, you are going to thrive. You're not going to decrease. You're not going to diminish. Amen. Now, some of you might be sitting here right now going, Pastor, that's not what's going on in my life. Well, listen, the truth. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. But Pastor Michael, I've heard all my life that we, we just we got to be broke and, and I can't expect these. No, change it right now by the grace of God. Yes. Now, don't believe what I'm saying, because I'm saying, I'm going to give you a bunch of scriptures. I want you to see, as we, before you leave this place, you are empowered and blessed to be rich. Notice what that scripture says in the New Living Translation. How many love the word? Amen. Everybody loves the word. Yes. We love the word. Look what it says here in the New Living. It says this, it is a land where food is plentiful and nothing is lacking. It is a land where iron is as common as stone and copper is as abundant in the hills. Look at that. Look at slide number four. I'll give you a couple of different translations. The complete common English Bible and the Bible in basic English. He goes, it's going to be a land 
where you will eat food without any shortage. You won't lack a thing there. The Bible in basic English said this. He goes, where there will be bread for you in full measure, you will be in need Everybody say, that be me. That be me. All right, look at verse number 16. I, I can't leave this chapter without saying this, and then we'll get moving on. So he starts telling me, he says, listen, you're going to be so blessed that there's going to be a temptation that you're going to start thinking that you're somebody in and of yourself. He says, God who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to do thee good. Everybody say at the latter end. How many believe there's, there's some good at the other side of the proven? Yeah. How, are you hearing me? Yeah. Some of you right now, you're getting tested a little bit. You're saying, well, well Pastor Michael, it's kind of tough. How many know some of those times you go through? And I've been there myself where you get humbled and God's testing you. And God's testing your, 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 your are you going to stand on the word? The word's testing you, right? Are you going to stay truthful to the Lord? Why? If you'll hold on, there's good on the other end. Yes. Look at verse number 17. He says this. He said, don't you say, and you shall not say in your heart that it's my power and it's my might of my hand that has gotten me this wealth. He said, don't ever, 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 ever say that it's you. Your schooling, your ability, your work ethic, whatever. Now, thank all those things are good parts of it. Don't get me wrong. Hand out of diligence shall prosper. Don't get me all. I'm not preaching loafism here, right? <laughs> Even in the Garden of Eden, they had to work, right? Yeah. Some people are like, well, I got to have them. We're just going to loaf around. Listen, if you're a loafer, if you don't work, God said it, you won't eat. Yeah. Right? So we're not preaching loafism here. But that's a new word. I'm going to patent it. <laughs> and thou shalt say in thy heart. Don't say it. Don't let the temptation get there. That it's my power and the might of my hand that, that has gotten me this wealth. Everybody say wealth. wealth. Look at the word for wealth. I want you to see it here. Slide, uh, actually, Jeremy, let's say, look at, uh, oh, well, well, let's go to the next verse. He said, don't say it's your power, strength, get you well. Verse 18. But you shall remember, everybody, this is what we should be remembering. The Lord thy God, Jehovah God. The self-eternal, self-existing God who reveals himself in so many wonderful ways. For it is he that giveth thee power. Don't forget it. He goes, when you're there, don't. He said, when you get all this wealth, does God want us to have wealth? Thank you. My wife is in agreement with that. It's all I need. <laughs> We're going to be blessed. I don't know about y'all. We blessed. She's getting it. <laughs> y'all there. But he said, don't you say, for it's God who gives thee power to get wealth. Why? That he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy fathers as it is this day. He said he's going to give you power. Look at the word power. Slide number five. How many love the word? Amen. How many love the word? Amen. How many love the word today? Amen. How many wealthy people by the grace and the power of God in this place? Let the weak say, I'm strong. Let the sick say, I'm well. Let the poor say, I'm rich. Jesus became poor so that you and I might become rich. Yes. You know, the Bible says he preached, preached the gospel to the poor. He's not just talking about spiritual poor. He was talking about poor people. Yes. What's good news to the poor? You don't have to be poor no more. <laughs> I'm going to sound like one of those uh, southern preachers there for a moment there. You, know? <laughs> you can't help it. But you don't have to be poor no more. Amen. The word power means this. God gives us a supernatural strength. Everybody say, thank you, Lord, for the strength. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord for the power. Thank you, Lord, for the might. Thank you, Lord, for the ability, the force, the vigor. But also substance, wealth. Strength, enthusiasm, energy. God gives you that. Yes. See, God, that's that. All of a sudden, you get this anointing. All of a sudden, it comes on you. You got this extra gear that the world doesn't have. You got some extra smarts that the world doesn't have. Yes. You got some extra enthusiasm that the world doesn't have. Why? It's the blessing of the Lord. Yes. <laughs> Go back to the scripture. You guys are eating it up way good today. Yummy. This is like Captain Crunch in the spirit, man. 
But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Remember this. I'm remembering it. And I'll tell you, man, when you start seeing his blessing in your life, you just sit there and you get humbled. And you go, yeah. me and her do it all the time. We look at each other and say, how in the world? It's a blessing. Amen. How in the world? He said, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Wealth. Everybody say wealth. wealth. Look at the word wealth. Slide number six. Oh, everybody say, I got power to get wealth. Look at your hands. I got power to get wealth. Some people, they go to work and they go, well, you know, Pastor Michael, you know, uh, they don't seem to like me. Liking you has nothing to do with it. We're going to see that if the Lord likes me. It's the blessing. Amen. Well, Pastor Michael, they're trying to keep me down. No, no, no. God, God promoted you up. And no man can keep you down. Are you hearing me? The word wealth means strength, might, efficiency, wealth, uh, uh, strength, army strength, ability, force, resources. He's talking about a nation. They're saying, we're going to bless you in every conceivable way. Look at the word for efficiency. God's going to give you power so that you can achieve maximum productivity with minimal wasted effort or expense. Hallelujah. Pray that for the government. Amen. Wouldn't it be nice yes. that they would just be able to do things, uh, and I'm not trying to be political, just so they don't spend stupid, stupidly? Yes. Right? Wouldn't it be great? And you need to pray that for husband. And we got that ability in our, heart, our hearts and our heart. Look at that in the New Living Translation. All right. Everybody say blessing. blessing. Wealth. Wow. Look at it says there, church fam. New Living Translation says this. We getting it today. Wow. Woo. We getting it. It says, always remember that it is the Lord your God who gives you power to become rich. He does it to fulfill the covenant he made with your ancestors. Is there a power and a blessing to cause you and I to become rich? Yes. I believe it, church family. Take it by faith. Look at, the, look at slide number eight. How many love the word? Yeah. Now, some of you are like, well, pastor, you're crazy. No, no, we're not taking another offering here. And if, you've, if you're in this church, you know we're, we're, we are not beggars. Be believers are not beggars, right? We present needs, but we're not all. <laughs> yeah. hey, I remember years ago, I got saved young. And I remember back in the 80s. And you get, I, say, I don't know if it's still going on now. You get better preachers getting out to you. <laughs> if you don't give, we're going off the air. Maybe you should go off the air. <laughs> we got him, man. You got to give. Deuteronomy is good new tragedy. says this. So then you must never think that you have made yourself wealthy by your own power and strength. Never think. But again, look at the word. God's word, good, good, um, God's word translates to this. You may say to yourself, I became wealthy of my own ability. No, you can't say that. Everybody say, I didn't do it myself. All right, all right, all right. Now, I, I look at this scripture here. Uh, let's see here. I want you to see it. We love the word. Don't we love the word? Oh, man. Let's see here. I think it was seven. <sighs> Just one second, guys. I'm sorry. I thought I wrote it down. How many love the word? Yes. We got it. Okay, look at Galatians, the third chapter, verse 13. Hallelujah. And we're going to read verse 14. How many love the word? Isn't it great? Amen. Oh, we're getting it today. Just want to make sense. All right. All right. Jimmy, you got that, buddy? All right. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Hallelujah. Everybody say, redeemed from the curse of the law. Now, if you look at part of the curse, part of the curse was lack. It was sickness, right? He said he redeemed us from the curse of the law. Why? Being made a curse for us. Cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree. Verse number 14. Why? Why? Why did Jesus become a curse for us? So that the blessing, everybody say the blessing, blessing. of who? Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Yes. Everybody say the blessing, of Abraham. the blessing of Abraham. Through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. 
The blessing that was put on Abraham got put on us. Yes. Everybody say, the blessing of Abraham. Blessing. Say, got put on us. Now look at what is the blessing of Abraham. Look at this. I want you to see it. Look at uh, the, uh, the 27th chapter. And look at, uh, actually, let's go to the, 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 um, the 28th chapter, and we'll read verse 1 through 4. Everybody say, the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham. That it's on me. It's on me. It's Notice what it says here. I want you to see it, church family. And we need to see what, what it says. Uh, chapter 28, verse number 4, 1, right? Uh, Exodus, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, Ge Ge Genesis, Genesis, Genesis. <laughs> thought he knew it. He's like... Notice this now. He says, And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take away from the daughters of Canaan. Verse number two. Arise, go to Panadurim, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee away from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy, thy mother's brother. Look at verse three. And notice this. And, and he says, And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multi multitude of people. He, said, he says, may the Lord bless you, make, make you fruitful, multiply you. Look at verse 4. And give thee the blessing of Abraham yes. to thee and thy seed, which is us, with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land that thou art a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. Now go to the 27th chapter. So we're seeing here, he's, he's sending Jacob off, and he says, man, the blessing be on you. May God multiply. May God make you fruitful. Now, the 27th chapter, look at verse number 28. How we love the word. Amen. This is the whole story of Isaac, and he's hungry. He wants venison. We know the story. So for the sake of time, I'm not going to do the whole story. And so Jacob comes in there, and, he, and he, he deceives his father to get the blessing. Jimmy, just go up one other verse. Just go up one other so we can just tie it in. And so he, he, Jacob says, come near, and he kissed him, and he smelled him, and he blessed him. He said, mm, you, you smell of my son is the smell of the field which the Lord hath blessed. So he had Esau's clothes on. He, says, he smells him. He wants to make sure Isaac. He said, and, he's, and even though it was Jacob, he says, oh, he says, man, phew, you smell like my son. You're the guy of the field. Now look at verse number 28. He said, now he starts, he's going to give him the blessing. He said, therefore God give thee the dew of heaven, and God give you the fatness of the earth. This is the blessing of Abraham. This is the blessing that was conferred onto Isaac by Abraham, but now we're seeing it being told from Isaac to Jacob. He said, God, make the dew of heaven come on you. May the fatness of the earth be on you. May there be plenty of corn and wine. The beginning portions of the blessing of Abraham are all natural. It starts out spiritual. Dew of heaven, which is the favor and the blessing of God. But then immediately the blessing of Abraham goes into, may God give you the fatness, the best, the choice of the earth. May God give you plenty of wine. May God give you plenty of corn. Look at verse number uh, 29. How many love the word? Amen. He said, let people serve you. Let nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Curse be everyone that curses thee, and blessed be he that blesses thee. That's the blessing. Now, some of that was a little tailored and specific for, you know, <laughs> you know that. But, but, but the point is, he was saying leadership, head, not tail. People serving you, blessed, fruitful, prospering. The blessing of Abraham is the dew of heaven on us that enables us to lead, yeah. that enables us to be blessed, yeah. to be people of influence. Yes. Amen. Are you hearing me? Look at verse number 30. How many love the word of the Lord? Amen. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing. That's the blessing. The blessing of Abraham. That's the blessing that's on us. He said that Jesus became a curse. Why? So that the blessing that God put on Abraham, that God put on Isaac and Jacob, could be on us. Yes. That blessing to prosper, that blessing to succeed, yes. that blessing to be the head. Yes. And Jacob was scarce out of the presence of Isaac, his father, and then Esau, the brother, came in. Now look at verse number 33. Esau comes in and he's like, oh man, I got duped. I got deceived. He's crying. 
And Isaac trembled exceedingly and said, Who there is he that hath taken venison and brought it to me? And I have eaten of all before thou camest. I have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. God hath blessed you. And you shall be blessed. Are you hearing me, church family? Are you hearing me, church family? Everybody say the blessing. Everybody say the blessing. Everybody say the blessing. All right, can you guys handle some more? I'm sure you can. You just want to get it, right? We just want to get it. Now, I know some of you are sitting here. I, I know some of you are just like, well, Pastor Michael. You're saying, well, Pastor Michael, how, how, you know, what about me? You know, I might be in a real bad situation. And um, how, how, can, uh, how could God get me out of it? I'm going to tell you, the blessing of the Lord can change anything in your life. Amen. Look at this scripture here. I just want you to see it. Then we're going to start talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Look at Proverbs 10.22. How many love the word? Amen. No matter where you are, God can take it and transform it. And we're going to see a scripture that's going to help you. So I don't want you to get going, well, you know, I'm too late in the game. God likes the impossible. Nothing's hard for our God. It says, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh. What does the blessing do? We saw it. What was the, what was the, a good portion of the blessing was prosperity. May he have abundance of corn and wine. May people start, may the dew of heaven. He said, the blessing of the Lord makes rich. Are you hearing me, church family? Amen. And he adds no sorrow with it. Amen. Notice what the word sorrow is. I want you to see it. Slide number 22. The blessing, I say that blessing yes. is on me. God's blessing is on me and it makes me rich. I have power to prosper and God is able to make all grace abound toward me. So I have more than enough for me and to give to every good work. Can you see it, church family? There's something supernatural about you, but if you don't believe it and you don't confess it, you're like, well, Pastor Mike, that sounds crazy. Listen, I told you last week, some of the things we believe in the Bible are crazy. You've been, you've been too Christianized. No, no, we've been, we got this whole language. The Bible says, if somebody smacks you on the one side, turn your cheek. That's what it says. Now, I don't know about you, but there's blessing in that. Bless those who curse you. Pray for them. That's crazy. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Some of the things we believe, by his stripes, we're healed. I believe that, Pastor. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So you're telling me somebody 2,000 years ago you never met, there's no DNA, we don't have any clue that it actually really happened. Now, we know it didn't. I'm not minimizing anything. I'm, trust me, I'm not being sacrilegious here. Oh, <laughs> Stop being like that. That somebody got whipped 2,000 years ago, and because of his bruises and his stripe, there's a medicinal effect. Yes, praise the Lord, I believe it. Yes, yes, amen. amen. We're at this time, a little, a little girl, she's sleeping in her house, an angel comes and says, you're going to have a baby. I've never been with a man. Well, the Holy Ghost is going to come on you. She tells you, right? That's crazy. Shame on you, Pat. I'm just, I'm just trying to tell you. That takes faith. There's something that happens in your spirit, in your mind. You go, how do I believe that? That's the Holy Ghost. Well, the Bible, the same Bible says, he became poor so that you and I can become rich. And the Bible says you're blessed with the blessing of Abraham, that you have power to get wealth. Believe it. Receive it. Just accept it by faith. He said, the blessing of the Lord makes, it, makes rich and adds no sorrow, adds no pain to it. Yeah. 
Some people say, oh man, you got money, you're gonna have problems. Listen, if you have problems with your money, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I have absolutely no problems with money. Absolutely none. I mean, I mean, it's almost if I got cash in my pocket, I have a hard time because I'm always just giving it away. It's almost, it, if I, really, if, I, if people came around and go, can you have a dime? I think, well, do you have something I can use my debit card for? I mean, I mean <laughs> if I got cash, it's like, you know, if somebody, I, yes, my wife, I'm always like, here, yeah, here, I just, I just, why? I want to be a blessing. If the Lord prompts my heart, I want to give. Yes, right. So if you're like, go Pastor Michael, hardship and toil. No, hardship and toil is when they turn your, your, your electric bill off in the middle of the summer and you're sweating your little tail off. That's hard. Yes. Hardship is in toil when you're at the gas station. You ain't got no money to put gas in your car. You're out there asking people, brother, can you spare a dime so I can put a dollar in my car? That's tough. Yes. Are you hearing me? Amen. Look what it says here. Go back to the scripture. Are you guys loving the word today? I love this. Yeah. It says, the blessing of the Lord, it, what does it do? Makes, Makes rich. rich. Amen. How many are being made rich right now? Yeah. Right now, even as you're sitting, boy, money, it's coming. Oh, pastor, you're getting greedy. No, no, I'm just, I'm trying to expand your thinking to renew your mind, to see the truth of God's word that'll set you free. Amen. Look at that uh, slide number 23, and then Jeremy will go to the message. Oh, it works. It works for everybody. It works for everybody. Oh, oh, I got a scripture for some for somebody. Look at the the, the common English Bible uh, says this: the Lord's blessings, the Lord's blessing, makes a person rich, and no trouble is added to it. Everybody say that be me. Look at that in the Message Bible. It says. God's blessing makes life rich. Nothing we do can improve on God. Uh, that's good. Are you hearing me? Now look at, look at this. Look at uh, Psalms 113, verse 7. How many love the word? I got so much more to share. I might have to just go into next week and let this marinate in your spirits a little bit. We got more, lots more. I might, I might have to just give you a little bit more. I don't want you to explode with all this goodness. I don't want you to have a spiritual, uh, you get all too much spiritual adrenaline in your spirit. Like, oh, Pastor, whew. Uh, you need to get high in Jesus. This, this, this gets me high. He goes, he, listen to this. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifted the needy out of the dunghill. Now, now look at that in the New Living Translation. Can, can God lift the poor? You might be sitting, with, you might, be, might be, have it bad, but not as bad as this is saying here. It says, he lifts the poor. How does he do it from, with the blessing? He lifts the poor from the dirt and the needy from the dumpster. Amen. So you're like, Pastor Michael, I've been eating out of the dumpster. You're a candidate. That's right. Right. Amen. Yep. Look, at, look at verse number seven, my dear friend, verse number eight. How many love the word? Why? Why does he lift him up out of the dumpster? Why does he lift him up out of the dunk hill? That he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. Can God take somebody that's been down and out in the dirt, in the dumpster, and place him in high places? Yes. Oh, yeah. And it's the blessing of the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Now, read the Message Bible. Uh, put both of them up, Jeremy, uh, verse 7 and 8. How many love the word? Amen. Everybody say that blessing's on me. You're like, well, Pastor Michael, I'm not in the dumpster eating yet. Don't go there yet. You're not going. You're going up. Yeah. I remember Brother Fred Price years ago. He said, God in the faith. He said, man, we are so broke. We're so, he, goes, you know, he goes, people used to talk about being at the bottom of the barrel. He said, I was underneath the barrel. He said, remember that? He said, I, was under, I didn't even have a nostril sticking up. I was underneath it. And you know what? God raised him up. And the same God that did it for him, he'll do it for you. The same God that did it for Abraham, he'll do it for you. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yes. He said, he picks up the poor from out of the dirt, rescues the wretched who have been thrown out with the trash. What does he do? He's able to seat them among the honored guests, a place of honor among the brightest and the best. Yes. Are you hearing me, church family? Are you hearing me, church family? God's able to do it no matter where you are. Like, Pastor, we're going through some tough times. Listen, listen, 
As a man thinketh, so you start changing this right here, and you start going, I believe the word, I'm blessed. The favor of God's on me, the blessing of the Lord's on me, the prosperity. I, I'm, I have power to get wealth, not get by. He's able to make all grace abound toward me. Are you hearing me, church family? You need to put that flag real strong. Say, I'm rich, man. And you need not be ashamed of the gospel. I heard one brother teach it and it took about a few times. Sometimes, sometimes you just, it takes a few times for it to sink in your spirit. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just hear it. And he kept saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And you know, and he goes, part of the gospel is God wants to prosper his people, bless his people. And I, I, after about the third or fourth time I fight God, I go, wait a minute, he's right. Sometimes people are ashamed of the blessing. You know, if Pat came to church today with his awesome new sandals, we're like, oh, Pat, those are beautiful sandals. But, oh, well, well, you know. No, but the Lord bless me. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Get a new car. Well, we've got to park it on the far side. Pastor can't get a new car because, boy, he better park it all oh, three blocks down because if people see he's got a new car, whoop, offerings go down, which they don't hear in Jesus' name. People are ashamed. We should not be not bragging. We shouldn't be out there flaunting and trying to make people feel bad. That's not what I'm saying here. We shouldn't just do that. But you should never, ever, 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 ever be ashamed of the gospel. And part of that gospel is to the poor. And some of you, we know, right? We have a dear sister. Sorry, Stephanie. She was living in her car. How, how many years ago? was it? You were living in your car, right? That was probably about five, four or five years ago. So was homeless. She was homeless. Look out, and look at two beautiful, now you young men out there, they're, they're holy women, but they're, I'm sure they're maybe looking. Beautiful, beautiful woman. Homeless. Living in a car. That's why, like, some nights I'll sit in bed and you, you hear me say it. I, when it's raining out, I'll look at my wife and we got a beautiful, I mean, the Lord's blessed us. We're blessed. I never forget it. I never, I never, I never forget. I go, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I have a roof over my head. Thank you, Lord, for my kids. Because it's a blessing. It's the blessing of the Lord. You know, but, but Pastor Michael, it's you. You're a preacher. Listen, man. Being a preacher means nothing. Meaning, you know, I got a special in on things, you know. I sort of kind of do, but in, in a good way. <laughs> but no, trust me. Actually, it's, sometimes it's, it's, hey, these are worth, I, got to, I know what I can do with these things now. What? <laughs> oh, there's my dish. I just want to just leave you with just one more scripture, if I can, if the Lord would just, I just, I got so much more to share about this. I got a lot about the blessing, and I think I'd be doing injustice if I kept pushing it. Man, let me just give you, oh, it's just, it's so, just these scriptures are just so great. They're just so good. Oh, Lord. Mm. Oh. Thank you so much. Oh, let me just close with this here, guys. Um, <clears throat> it's just so good. The word is just so good. I just, yeah, just love yeah. the word. I just, I was really, truly, it's a, truly love, truly, truly, it's an honor to share, share the word, really. It's an honor. Here you go. Okay, uh, Genesis 12, one, start with one. I just want them to see it and we'll, we'll uh, I'll just give you the definitions here and we'll see. Oh, it's so good, mm, so good. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country, get from thy kindred, and from thy father's house into a land that I will show you. Verse two. And he goes, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and, thou, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Now the word blessed, he said, I will, I will, I will bless thee. I want you to see the word, and I got two slides just real for it here. Slide 15. He said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you great. 
In slide 15, this is what the word means. And, and again, we'll get more into next week. There's the Hebrew word. It means to kneel by implication to bless God. But also, it means like we're blessing the Lord. We're kneeling. We're blessing the Lord. It's an act of adoration. But notice this. It's vice versa man as a benefit. Look at what the picture graph. This is one of the definitions that said this. It's a place where one kneels down to drink and present and fill one with a gift. To give honor to someone and be prospered by God. When God blessed us, he said, come here. We're worshiping him. He says, come here. And he says, what? I want to put you by my water. I want you to put by here. And it's a place where I want to fill you with a gift. The blessing of God is a gift. Amen. It's an honor. He gives honor to us. Why? So that we're prospered by God. Amen. Are you hearing me, church family? Everybody say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. With, a with a gift. The blessing of Abraham, blessing of Abraham. We'll give, next, is on me. on me. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Say, my hands are blessed. Hands are blessed. I'm, blessed. I'm blessed. The favor of God's on me. God's on Just like Abraham like was blessed. Was blessed. I'm, blessed. I'm blessed. Say, the blessing, the blessing. Is, on is on me. I'm blessed. I'm, blessed. I'm, anointed, I'm anointed to prosper. His favor is on me. God's making me rich right now. Even as I speak, I have power. I have favor. I have ability. I have enthusiasm to get wealth. I have more than enough. Jesus became poor so that I might be made rich. You're made rich. Just, just like you're made the righteousness of God and just like... By his stripes you were healed, you're made rich. Yes. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're rich. You're royalty. You're rich. And no matter where you are right now, listen, 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 listen. Don't let the devil lie to you in any way. You might be sitting there and say, Pastor Michael, I got nothing. That, that scripture there. But I'm going to tell you, he's able to take a person from the dark garbage dump, yes. from the junk heap, from the dung hill, yes. the manure pile, yes. and raise you up. And make you sit in places of honor. Amen. Sit you among kings. Amen. Give you a, why? What is that? It's the blessing of the Lord yes. that makes rich yes. and adds no sorrow to it. Yes. Say the blessing of the Lord yes. has made me rich. Yes. Say, say it in faith. Say the blessing of the Lord yes. has made me rich. Yes. I'm 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 rich. I know people think we're crazy saying that, but it feels good. Stand with me to your feet. You guys are awesome. Hallelujah. Come on, singers. I think we need